for what's quite obvious to me is that our current leaders do not learn from history. They think that they are able to wield these new powers and not be damaged, uh, distorted by power. You know, power they've never had. Most of the politicians had pretty simple lives, not so not on the world stage. Scientists, academics, they weren't on the world stage saying things to the politicians to be, to, you know, to be quoted on newspapers saying this expert says this thing about lockdowns and things like that. But um, I just don't think that a lot of the leaders are learning from history and that they're not aware of how they can be corrupted by the power. And they're trusting other world leaders as well to not be corrupted by the power as well. So I just, I just, for me, it just doesn't make any sense. I, Crazy. I, I, I think I can address your, your, your statement with this one. In my country is a prime example. We have a group of people, these new Democrats, these new left-wing nut jobs who think that socialism is a good idea. And I've done debates with them, and I always win. Because I tell them, I say, well, if socialism, as you envision it, is such a great idea, why in the last century of socialist government has not one single example been a success? Why is socialism such a, an appealing concept to you? If you look around the world at every country that tried it, from national socialism to communism, uh, to any form of despotism that uh, where there's a one party rule, because in order to have socialist government, you have to have one party rule. So where do you find this appealing and successful? And no one can answer that question. They say, well, they just haven't applied socialism the right way. I'm like, well, and I'm like, well, let me ask you this question. How, how is depriving people of property, mandating their lives, determining what they get paid, determining what job they have, determining how much education they receive, determining where they go to school, and determining every facet of their life, which includes killing innovation? Because if you have a socialist society, you can't have free market capitalism in a socialist society. It, 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 it can't, you can't have organized religion either because it's incongruent. So how do you take away all those rights of the average human being and expect them to stand up and go, damn, I like this? Because I've never met a refugee from a socialist country living in my country that said, wow, I really miss the good old days back home. <laughs> yeah. I never have. So the most dangerous thing to, to a democracy, and people keep calling my country democracy. We are not a democracy. A democracy we are a representative republic because we have 50 individual states under the federalist system that give states the rights to mandate their own laws as long as they fall in line with the U.S. Constitution. If you don't violate the Constitution, you can do any damn thing you want. We're not a pure democracy. Israel is a democracy. Okay. Uh, Great Britain has a parliamentary form of democracy, which is a very good system of government, by the way. It's just not always applied properly as with ours now. But no. We are a republic, and the republic is impossible to take away unless you go to a pure democracy. A democracy is one election away from going out of existence. A republic takes generations to kill because each state can have a bill requesting a convention of states. This happened back in the 18, in 1860. We had a four-year event called the American Civil War because several states decided to secede from the Union. Well, I think in our, under our federal constitution, I believe it, if 35 states agree to a, a constitution of states, then they could vote to secede from the Union. And if they don't like the way things are going, states can say, oh, we don't want to be, we don't want to be a part of you anymore. California, New York, New Jersey – you're, you're harboring all these criminals, illegal aliens. You're raising taxes on everybody. Uh, they're wanting to come here. Well, no, we're not going to. And the federal government says that's a good idea. So, okay, we're going to secede from the union. It won't happen, but it, but it's there. It, well, it could, could happen. happen. It could happen. Yeah, it, it could happen. It might happen. And I tell you what, man. Biden is. I. I. This clown. This guy, this guy has exceeded all expectations, man. I mean, I mean, watching him on television and watching some of his end results of his decisions is like watching a blind man juggle live hand grenades. I mean, it's not going to end well. OK, it's like putting Stevie Wonder in Formula One racing. That will not end well. He's just not up to the task. And the people around him are yes men. The people around him are so intellectually bankrupt that they actually think, wow, that's a good idea. Either they believe that and they're genetically impaired, or they know it's, they know it's crap, 
but they go along with it because their jobs depend upon being on the on the on the winning team. As we all know now, coming out, the winning team is is is, is proven to have been a fraud because of all the election fraud that's coming out in these various states. Uh, but no, our nation is very unique in the fact that we have. First of all, the United States was the first country in history to be a colonial power that broke away from a major colonial power. We, we were the first colonial holding to actually successfully break away from a major colonial power, Great Britain. Everyone else followed our example. Uh, okay. Well, what, not, but what about ancient history up till up until now? I mean, no, 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 no. I'm talking about a colonial province that became an independent nation by defeating its overlord in a conflict. Okay. So no one else did that. No one what else did the Romans that. and Greeks when there's all those territories were flipping around. The Brit- no, the, no, the Romans and Greeks fell apart, but from, from the inside, the Romans deteriorated. They, they stopped policing their borders. They uh, overextended. They did not, uh, they did not control the immigration of the Goths, the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, the other Germanic tribes. They didn't control their borders. They were infiltrated and destroyed and decayed from within. It took about four or five centuries to happen, but in the last century, in, in, well, in, in the fifth century AD, it, it came to a climax. It's crazy, four or five centuries versus now, where it can happen in. Um, yeah, because you have years. Well, because people can board planes, they can get on ships. You know, they can walk across a southern border that's unsecured. Uh, but if you don't have borders, you don't have countries, and if you don't have security, then you do not have a population that believes in the efficacy of its own government. And if that happens, then you have started the internal decay. And that's what the liberals want. They want the internal decay. They want that groundswell of illegal immigrants coming in who they who they want to give citizenship, to vote Democrat, to make it a one party state. And if they can do that, then they can control in perpetuity. What they don't understand is the fact that uh, of the 300 and almost 30 million Americans living in this country, there are at least 20 to 25 million of us who are military veterans who are saying, no, we're not, we're not, we're not going along with that program. Okay. And, uh, and there's a reason, think about this last year. Remember in, in 20 major American cities, the Black Lives Matter and Antifa were torching and burning and blowing things up and killing people. Okay. Portland, Seattle, Detroit. I mean, not Detroit, but that police chief locked it down. He, he did, he did the right thing, but all these major cities where you had this rampant damage, arson, looting, all this stuff going on, taking over sections, burning police stations. That only happened in liberal enclaves. That only happened in democratic controlled environments. And you know why they didn't try that stuff in Texas? They didn't try that stuff where I live in North Carolina. They didn't try it in in, in Arizona. Uh, They didn't try it in places where large concentrations of people who have guns and know how to use them would be available to address that call. They didn't do it. They hit those areas where the mayors were compliant, the governors were weak, and they thought, oh, people are going to do it. Like Nancy Pelosi, people are going to do what they're going to do. Let them burn, loot, kill. Uh, Kamala Harris, our VP, started a, 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 she started a fund to bail these criminals out of jail as soon as they got arrested for uh, throwing you know Molotov cocktails and torching police cars. So she created a bail fund to get them out of jail and get them back on the street because it, it fit her narrative. It fit the Democratic narrative to have these people blowing and burning things up. Uh, and so under so-called oppression resistance, which is a fallacy. But it didn't happen in the southern states. And there's a reason, because we southern boys don't play that game, man. We don't do that. We'll kill you. We'll kill you quick. You know, the only, thing, the only problem, I don't have enough land to dig enough holes to bury all the bodies. I'd have to stack back there. But if you want to show up in a big crowd and threaten me, all right, well, I'm just putting you on notice, buddy, that, uh, you know, I've got a lot of rounds and I had to use them. And uh, but that's why that only happened in very liberal enclaves, because they knew the liberal leadership in those cities would not allow federal forces in to to basically restore order because it would accelerate the knowledge that they were weak in their their handling of their own social discontent. I just Uh, don't understand this whole liberal pro-communist mindset. Okay, communism is good for the people at the top. But all these minions, what are they expecting to be life after their dictatorship communist is installed? uh, because the people who want communism are the very people who think they're going to be at the top. But there's so many of them, they can't all be at the top. Of course, but it, it, it's kind of like watching starving people scramble for the last sandwich on the buffet line. Everyone wants to be the last guy to get a bite of that sandwich. And whoever ends up with that sandwich, it's like 
in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, right? So if you're at the ape, if you're the apex predator at the top of that pile, you're sitting really well. And you have your minions around you, like Stalin, the Stavka, and you had the Kremlin, and all these people sitting around like Fidel Castro in his in- inner circle. The top communists, the hypocrisy of socialism and communism is the Marxist brand was equality for all. The communist mantra and the socialist mantra is equality for all except us. We earned it because we led the revolution. That's why when socialists and communists win a re- if they if they win a revolution and take over a country, that what's the first thing they do after they get rid of the intellectuals? They get rid of the revolutionaries who helped them get there, because the revolutionaries who helped them get there realize that they're now the new peasantry, and they're not going to elevate socially or economically. And they're like, wait a minute, we fought for this, and we're still stuck here plowing with a mule. What? Okay, you got to get rid of the revolutionaries who put you in power. And then cultivate and propagandize and educate a new crop of revolutionaries who believe in the lie. And then as those people grow up and realize that there's another great lie that their forefathers just just fought for. And they're like, wait a minute, we believe in this great, great revolutionary process as well, but we're not benefiting from it. That's when you have another purge. Socialist organisms have to purge themselves every generation, every few years, because if you don't selectively continue purging your own ranks, you cease to have a functionality, a reason to exist. Okay. Everyone's going to suffer. But what you want to do is make sure that the people who suffer the most are the people who are the most targeted, exploited, and propagandized enemies of the state. Stalin purged the Ukrainians three times. I mean, hell, the greatest famine in European history was because of Stalin. Okay? And the Ukrainians hated Stalin in large part. Uh, But he still maintained the power because he had the military, the NKVD, the GRU. He had all these people. You know, Lavrenti Beria was his enforcer. So the Ukrainians paid a price for being subjugated. This country, that won't happen. That won't happen. And and the and the problem with the socialist mindset is that you said it before. You said they don't learn from history. I think they understand history quite well. I think they're arrogant enough to think that they can change the course of history. 